Do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a proven roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. We walk you through the exact same process that we use to run franchise marketing campaigns for our clients at scale that has resulted in triple digit growth. This blueprint isn't for anyone. It's not for people just starting a franchise. It's not for franchises without long-term goals. This is for franchises that want to scale up their marketing in a predictable and profitable way using a proven roadmap. If you want to sell more franchises, keep your current franchisees happy, and learn from people who have already done it, go to FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com and sign up today. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm very excited. I have Leanne Caruso, who is a franchise marketing consultant at uh, Hello CMO. Leanne, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's great to finally have you on. So (laughs) for the listeners who haven't heard of you, what do you do? I am a franchise marketing consultant. So um, pretty much what I'm doing is I come into brands and acting as a fractional CMO or an interim CMO, um, providing that strategic level of franchise marketing um, expertise, strategy budgets, working with the C-suite team, um, and also helping with um, franchise development. Um, doing sales and marketing alignment. There's obviously a big gap there oftentimes too. Um, So it allows brands who are either in transition or emerging who need that level of expertise, but oftentimes can't afford a full-time CMO or VP of marketing. Very cool. So you're kind of coming in right when they're, when they're putting that pedal to the metal then. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of, as you know, with franchising, a lot of times it starts off with a dream and it's an entrepreneur who had this vision and obviously did something right and grew their business, whether it be one to 10 to 20 locations, multi, multi multi-unit. And then um, a lot of times they still have the same team that they started with, or they don't really know where to evolve their marketing uh, or where or how to evolve their marketing as they bring on franchisees. Um, And so it's a, it's a difficult spot to be in because you know how to market locally. You obviously built a business there, but franchising is its own beast. Um, and making sure that that consistency and that process and the tools that the franchisees need um, are are in place because they they did kind of buy a business in a box. So, um, and then then more importantly is having the team to execute, having that infrastructure to be able to um, to manage vendors and franchisees and so on. Very cool. So, tell me more about um, some of the problems that you see franchises having on that marketing side when they're really trying to evolve into that next phase of growth? Um, so I think there's a, there's a few different um, things that I've seen sometimes all together, sometimes, sometimes just one of them, but um, a, a lot of times it's the team, um, either no team or um, not a strong enough team or a team that understands franchising. So team infrastructure, I think is really important. I don't think that franchisors really understand the depth of um, marketing people or software or processes that need to be in place because franchisees um, need uh, support and they need to pick up the phone and they need to call you or they're gonna shoot you an email. Um, And that is time consuming through and through. So, um, and you have to be there to support your franchisees um, in order for this whole thing to work, right? So I think that the team is probably one of the biggest pieces um, to have strong people in place. And then the other thing is is vendors. Um, Not either having the same vendors that you had when you started who might have been wonderful for you in the beginning, but they don't have the capacity to grow with you. Um, I, I see that being the, that being a big miss. Um, software processes, um, you know, Excel spreadsheets all over the place. You know, some things in Google Drive, some things in Dropbox, some things <laughs> that that to me is like, you know, 
your franchisees don't know where to find anything or there's just that the systems just aren't in place. Um, a lot of times things are stuck in people's heads and, you know, as more and more people are going to come and grow this business with you, this has to be, you know, documented, documented process and systems. So I would say those are probably the biggest things besides strategy. I mean, strategy is also the, the killer. Um, if you have multiple vendors doing multiple things and there's no strategy in place, how do you really know what's working? How do you really, are you, are you really aligning the efforts? Why is this vendor doing this? And this vendor is also kind of doing that, those kinds of things. So I think it's really taking a big picture view of it and then kind of reining it all in, um, you know, putting things together, aligning the efforts, stop operating in silos, you know, the basics. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so easy to see from the outside looking in, not easy to see when you're in the weeds. And that's totally understandable. Uh, of course. So what are some of the first steps that a franchisor can do to make sure that all of their vendors are lined up together and ro helping row in that same direction? So I say the, one of the first things I do is I audit everything, um, audit the vendor, what the vendors are doing, what's, what's the engagement look like, what's the scope of work, what's their objectives, and are, are they working towards those objectives, and what's your budget? Um, so I think understanding your entire budget, understanding your goals, whatever those might be, backing into what what your vendors are doing and then making sure everything's aligned. So it's kind of like, take a step back, let's look at everything big picture and then let's figure out what we have. Is it working and is it aligning? Um, so oftentimes it's in the data and the data either isn't being presented clearly or the data isn't being reviewed. So I, I think just kind of being able to look at everything, simplify it and see what's working and what's not, and then making decisions. Then you can make informed decisions. You might really like partner A because they've been a good partner to you from the very beginning and that's awesome. But if there's no results or if they're not, if they're not truly performing to the scope, then, and if you don't have a marketing person to really understand that either, it's why are you spending money on it? Or if you're spending money for paid, paid digital advertising, but you don't have a solid website in place that's a conversion engine for you or going to attract those leads, then, then you've got an issue too. Why are you spending money for something that's not going to convert? So it's, it's a lot to look at, but I think, I think first step, take a, take a, take a step back and then look at everything and have, have a couple of people take a look at the, at the results, the goals, the objectives, and how does everything align within there? Totally. Uh, and I'm glad that you brought up data because, you know, especially, you know, doing digital marketing myself, we're constantly surrounded by it. It holds people accountable for, you know, what they were actually brought on board to do. So I'm curious, how do you help educate franchisors to really cut out that uh, noise and focus on the signal when there's just, there can just be so much data coming at you. That's true. Um, so I think you have to look at the numbers that are important to you, right? I mean, there's so many numbers that, you know, is it impressions versus reach versus conversions versus clicks versus, you know, and I, and sometimes your vendors will tell you what's important to you, but really they might not understand your business and really something else is a more valuable number. So I think it's figuring out again, just what are the end goals and what are those objectives? How are we getting there? And then we can look at the numbers. So, you know, one of the most important numbers to any business is what's your cost to acquire a customer. Most business owners don't know that number. So that's step number one. <laughs> like, let's figure that out so that we know we know what we're working, what goals we're working towards. And then let's look at our existing data and see, are we getting to that goal? Are we above it? Are we, you know, below it? So the, I think I think just understanding the data and understanding the numbers that are important to you. A lot of them are the same, but it's different. It, it's a different meaning to to a lot of businesses. So true. Let, let's geek out on this data point a little more. So, okay. what infrastructure should franchisors have in place to make sure that they're collecting all of this important information? That's a great question because everybody has dashboard fatigue. <laughs> like. 
this dashboard here and that dashboard here and that dashboard there. So I found very few vendors who actually can incorporate all of the numbers. And so I think that's a pipe dream, which is great to have, and maybe one day we'll have it. So then you turn to Excel spreadsheets and pivot tables or Google sheets or whatever. So um, honestly, I think it's, it's truly uh, understanding the data that each vendor partner or that each tactic brings to the table, then taking those numbers and pulling them all together. So, um, and then making them easy to understand for a C-suite. Um, you know, the C-suite is looking at like two or three numbers and that's all they care about. And just why isn't it like this or why is it like this? And let's keep doing that. And let's, why are we still doing that? So make it super easy. And so I think you, I think you need a person or a body or a team that's taking those numbers, analyzing them, and then, and then kind of crafting them into a story. So let's tell the story, you know, did they, we're doing programmatic and we're doing Facebook and we're doing LinkedIn and we're doing search campaigns and we've got the blog over here. And, you know, so what is the journey that that person took to get to purchasing a product? So I think that telling the story is important and using whatever numbers it takes to tell the story. Um, but you're probably going to have to pull from different dashboards and you're just going to have to understand how those numbers kind of collide with each other to get to the end result. Mm -hmm. So switching gears a little, Ian, you know, um, you mentioned that one of the other problems that emerging and, and like in growth phase franchisors have is making sure they have a solid team in place. So what can, you know, these franchisors do to make sure that they're setting themselves up for uh, success on the human resource side? Um. So I think in the beginning, sometimes it starts with a person helping to manage the partners because hiring a lot of people, the, the full team that you might not need might not be possible. So I do believe that every, every brand has to have a marketing person. Um, it's interesting to find these emerging brands that don't have marketing people. Um, and they relied on vendors to get them to certain places, um, I think, because it's easier. So I think first and foremost, bring in a person and it can't be a junior person. Um, we, we can train junior people up all day long and we will do that eventually. And, and that's a good thing to do. But you need somebody who has, you know, a few years of experience, who understands strategy, who understands working with vendor partners and who understands the data. And really that can help um, almost like a symphony conductor, you know, who can <laughs> bring all the people and make sure they're all playing the right note at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's probably one of your most important people to have. And then you can, you can contract out the contract, the content writer, the social person or the PPC, and you can do that for relatively inexpensive. It doesn't have to be an agency. So I would say, I would say start with a person who is experienced. If you can start with a person who has experience who also understands franchising, that's a bonus. <laughs> but if awesome. they don't, make sure your vendor partners are in our franchise marketers. Totally. So should this person be, you know, channel specific, like specifically digital, specifically offline? Should they be kind of like full stack marketing where they know a bit of everything? Uh, tell me a bit more. That's a great question. Um, so Ideally, they'd be full stack project manager type marketing coordinator type understand that they'll understand the big picture. That's that's really what you want. Um, if you start with a digital marketer, that makes the most sense to me. If you can't do the if you can't find the unicorn um, just because everything is revolved around digital marketing these days. And so um, truly having somebody who understands the digital marketing data and can explain it to others is, would be, would be, you know, secondary, I think, or ideal if you can't find that other person. Totally. So one question I always like to ask uh, guests is what advice would you give someone just starting out as a franchisor? We'll get right back to the show, but do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. 
That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. To find out more, visit FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Now back to today's episode. That's a great question. I would say fill your circles. Find, find other franchisors who've been there. The franchising community is so incredibly helpful um, and they're so supportive of each other and each other's growth. growth. So I, I would definitely say, um, you know, attend these round, I mean, one of the things I have with COVID is all of these round tables that are happening. People are just connecting virtually and they're having meetings and they're brainstorming together. Um, I think that's really, really important to understand that you're not the only person who is going through this. And why would you create the wheel if another franchisor has had this hiccup before and probably can help you solve it? So I say, you know, definitely immerse yourself in franchising and the people in franchising and just make good connections and do the round tables and do the webinars and attend the events and go to the conferences because you just learn so much from each other and you really build your network really, really well. Um, and then, um, gosh, I would say that that's most important. Um, and, and I mean, this is self-serving, but, but take consultants advice, you know, um, bring in, bring in a consultant or a strategist. Um, there's, there's companies who do it that can help you build your franchise system who understand franchising and can help you overlook, not overlook, can help you, um, prevent some of the issues that emerging or micro emerging brands have. Um, and, and, Probably number one, I know you only asked me for one, but I'm going to keep going. Now they're coming to me. Um, probably um, one of the most important things to remember as a new franchise brand, you're excited to sell your franchise and become the fastest growing so-and-so in the land. But if you don't have your system in place and if you don't have your fran if your franchisees aren't happy, you're not going to sell franchises. So you have to equally focus on operations and marketing as much as you focus on franchise development. So um, if that system is not in place, um, it will implode. And so <laughs> being sure that, that you're still focused on, on the actual core of your business of why you got into franchising in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to go back to uh, your first point, you know, um, and we touched on this a little before, but when is a good time to, you know, bring you in as a franchise marketing consultant? Like when, when is that kind of light bulb moment, that perfect spot uh, franchise or should be chatting with you? Um, yeah, I think it's, um, it, it, gosh, every emerging and micro emerging brand is different depending on if they have money or if they don't have money. So you've got the shoestring budget folks um, who are just, you know, taking things one day at a time. And um, so I think, I think those are great folks to talk to, but until they have the financials to back the entire franchising piece of it, then it's, then it, they're going to have issues. They're going to have challenges because we can talk about all of the right things to do, but if you don't have the money to invest in those efforts to make them happen, then it's not going to work. So I would say probably around 10 plus locations is a good time to get started um, un unless there's more dollars behind it, just simply due to the fact if you don't, if you don't have the money to franchise, then it's going to be a longer road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. So you work with a ton of franchisors, um, you know, you have a ton of knowledge when it comes to digital, what channels are you seeing really move the needle? Uh, for franchises? Uh, in, in consumer franchise marketing or brand of? Both. Okay. Um, so it's interesting, as you know, Facebook threw us for a loop this past year. <laughs> and so did iOS 14 and all, all of the things. So I think it's just kind of been interesting to um, circumvent all of these all of these challenges that when we had channels that were working so incredibly well, and then all of a sudden our results are different or they're not working as well. And this goes for both sides. So um, 
LinkedIn, interestingly enough, is working for some brands, not for others. Um, I will say LinkedIn seems very saturated right now. Um, but because of the ability to hyper target, it makes sense for some businesses. Um, Facebook, like I said, has kind of given us a run for our money. I love, I love remarketing on Facebook and retargeting. I think that's, that's kind of your golden ticket to advertise in Facebook right now, unless you have a very specific product or service that you're selling. Um, you know, Google search has proven to me, Google search is relatively the same. I don't see too many changes with it other than the data and the results because of the iOS 14 changes. So that's, that's been a challenge. Um, and then I think what's really interesting is these um, AI companies who are coming up and, and taking lists and optimizing the list that you have and helping you find um, your target market building lookalike lists and really taking the data um, and enhancing it and helping you get to the right people. So I'm watching that and seeing how that's working. Um, that's real fascinating to me because it's kind of like we just took a right turn from going directly to Facebook and advertising on Facebook and going directly on LinkedIn when really we've got these other kind of options that um, can hit our, our ideal candidate or ideal client head on. For sure. Very interesting stuff that I always like to geek out on. Yeah. So what, what question should I have asked you that I haven't yet? Oh, I don't know. Bit of a curveball for you. Yeah. Um, what question should you have asked me? I don't have an answer to that. Okay. I can't think the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, here's a different one. Um, okay. What is... What is something that franchisors that, that you work with um, have commonly had misconceptions about? Franchisors that have commonly had misconceptions. Yeah. So is there like a silver bullet that people constantly rely on where we know it's not true? Um, right. Such as that. Um, some common misconceptions are there is a silver bullet and there's not. Um, definitely have to have and I think this happened in COVID too, like you realized you can't have your, all your eggs in one basket. You really have to have a multi-dimensional digital marketing program and it's going to cost you money. I mean, it, it, is, it is expensive and, and you have to spend the money to make the money. Um, so I think uh, that's a misconception. Um, the, how fast they're going to grow. If you look at it in terms of Frandev, I think people think they're going to grow faster than, than they, they really are. Um, but it takes time, money and energy and solid foundations in place like operations and marketing to, to get there. Um, and then I think, I think budget is a big misconception, um, how much it will actually cost to accomplish goals. So uh, that's why I mean, we're lucky we're in digital marketing that we have actual data to prove the actual thing. It's not a billboard where we spent $10,000 and there's high traffic and we hope we got XX from it. So um, we, we are at an advantage in, as digital markers, marketers that we have data to inform our decisions. And so that's, that's the key that will help you with your budget, that will help you with your goals and that will help you determine you know, how much you need to spend. So I think, I think people don't have enough budget on hand. Mm -hmm. Facebook doesn't and, cost me anything. Yeah. Yeah. No? And, and, and there's that factor of statistical significance as well is like, you know, the amount that you're investing, can you actually make, you know, conclusions that are significant with it? Right. Right. And I think too, with franchisees, um, their small local business, they often don't have the budget or aren't willing to spend the budget necessary. Um, and so I think that's, that's always a challenge. Um, and I think, and I've always said this from being a marketer, my job is more of an educator more than anything, is 
teaching and educating on what we're doing, why we're doing it, what value there is to it, and then how to read the data and how to understand the insights so that you know what you're doing is working or not working. And then it's a lot easier to be less upset if you understand how they all work together. It doesn't mean you have to go build a Facebook ad. It doesn't mean you have to go build a PPC campaign. It just means if you understand the data, like understanding Google Analytics in itself is very important for any franchisee, any business owner. Um, and I think there's, there's a constant gap or miss in information that they're not taking the time to learn what they need to know to be a successful business owner. I could not agree with you more. Um, with that being said, Leanne, you know, we're, we're ending the, uh, the podcast, you know, now I want to be respectful of your time, but I could chat with you all day. Um, the way I like to end podcasts is with something I call the lightning round. So a few fast paced questions coming at you. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So first question is what is your favorite tool or app that you cannot live without? Oh, marketing related. Anything. Anything. Um, <laughs> ways. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It's, it's a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, next question. What is your favorite book? My favorite book? Um, I don't know about my favorite book, but I'll tell you about the book I just read. It's called The Intelligent Leader. Um, by John Matone and about um, becoming a better leader and how, you know, you use your vulnerability to kind of better um, lead people and, and become stronger. It's great. Very cool. So speaking of leaders, who is a franchise leader that you look up to? Franchise leader that I look up to. Um, gosh, there's so many. I would say um, feel free and, to name a few if you would like. Yeah. in in different capacities, um, I would say, um, well, Paul Pickett from wild birds. I think he's just a fantastic person. Um, he's got a 33 career with 33 year career with one brand. Um, he's done a lot with leadership and diversity and IFA and, and kind of really building that whole program. Uh, so I think, I think he's just a wonderful human. Um, gosh, oh gosh, there's so many Michelle Rowan from franchise business review. Um, she's just an absolute delight and very smart and a good connector of people. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it with those two right now. Awesome. All right. Last question. I promise. Where can people find out more about you and your company? Um, my LinkedIn profile is probably the best way to go. Um, or my website, it's hello-cmo.com and, um, or LinkedIn, Leanne Caruso. And, um, I look forward to connecting with everybody and thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem, Leanne. It was an absolute delight. You dropped a ton of knowledge that I know listeners are going to absolutely love. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. If you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And until then, happy marketing.